What if I told you the time you spent scrolling yesterday actually felt like it was far longer than what you experienced? Sounds confusing, right? But there's something neuroscience discovered recently that explains why your brain processes phone time differently than real time. Before we dive in, take a moment and check your screen time from yesterday. Look at that number. Now, can you clearly remember anything you did on your phone? Anything at all? It's strange, isn't it? It's as if those hours just slipped away into some kind of void where time doesn't follow the rules. For years, scientists believed they had a solid understanding of how we process time. The assumption was simple. When we're engaged in something interesting, time flies. When we're bored, it feels like time drags. So logically, we thought phone time must feel fast because it's constantly entertaining us. But the math didn't add up. Researchers at Stanford uncovered something surprising. People weren't just losing track of time. They were experiencing it differently than ever before. And that's not all. The way we process time on our phones is fundamentally different from how we process time during activities like watching TV, reading books, or even playing video games. Here's what these researchers found, and it changes everything. Your brain keeps track of time by linking together moments of focused attention, like beads on a string. Every distinct memory helps you measure the passage of time. This system was crucial when we lived in a simpler world. Our ancestors needed to remember where food was, which plants were poisonous, and how to find shelter. So our brains evolved to create clear, focused memories. But then came the phone. Now, instead of focusing for long periods, your brain is switching focus every few second. Every notification, every scroll, every new image, every like, and every comment pulls your attention in another direction. MIT neuroscientists recently discovered something shocking. It takes your brain about 23 seconds to fully engage with any new piece of information. But on average, people check their phones every 6 to 8 seconds. That means your brain never fully completes its natural processing cycle. It's like trying to take a photo while constantly shaking the camera. This constant switching of attention creates something called temporal fragmentation. Think of it like this. Normal memories are like full, clear photographs. Easy to remember. But phone time creates partial exposures that never fully develop into real memories. Want to test this? Think about your last vacation. You can probably remember the sights, sounds, and conversations clearly. Now, think about your last scroll session on your phone. Even if you spent hours scrolling, it's hard to recall any specific moment. It's almost like trying to remember a dream. Your brain processes experiences in two main ways. Active process processing and passive processing. Active processing creates lasting memories and helps you feel like time is moving in a real, tangible way. Passive processing, on the other hand, creates hazy or even no memories at all, and it makes time feel like it's slipping away, almost phantom-like. Now, here's where it gets even more interesting. Phones have introduced a third type of process, fragmented processing. Your brain is constantly starting the process of creating memories, but it never finishes the cycle. This new way of processing time is altering how people experience their days. People in their 20s and 30s are experiencing what used to only happen to older generations. Time seems to speed up every year. And for kids born after 2010, they are the first generation growing up with fragmented attention as their default mode. Their brains are developing differently, processing time differently than any generation before them. We're seeing the consequences of this everywhere. Rising ADHD diagnoses, increasing anxiety, memory issues in young people, difficulty maintaining focus, and even time perception disorders. All of these are tragic tracking perfectly with the rise of smartphone usage. Phones aren't just affecting our time, they're affecting how we experience life itself. But don't worry, there's good news. Your brain hasn't lost its ability to process time the way it's supposed to. The mechanism is still there. It's just overwhelmed by the constant fragmentation. Think of it like trying to have a conversation while someone interrupts you every six seconds. Eventually, you stop being able to form complete thoughts. This isn't just about time management. It's about reclaiming your lived experiences. Those phantom hours aren't just all. This isn't just about time management, it's about reclaiming your lived experiences. Those phantom hours aren't just missing from your schedule, they're missing from your life. Your brain didn't properly encode them, so they might as well have never happened. But once you understand how this mechanism works, you can hack it. Not by spending less time on your phone, but by using your phone completely differently. Instead of letting your attention fragment, create something neuroscientists call temporal bookends. These are clear start and stop points that let your brain process time normally. For example, choose three specific videos to watch, read exactly five posts, or spend 15 focused minutes on messages. When you do this, something incredible happens. Time starts feeling normal again. Your days begin to feel richer, fuller, and more memorable. They feel more like they did when you were younger. Imagine looking back at your week and actually remembering what happened, instead of losing entire days to the digital void. This isn't just about managing time. It's about experiencing your life more fully. Time isn't just passing. It's being experienced. And when you're fully present, your brain processes it naturally, letting 
helping you get back control over your schedule and your life. So if this changed how you think about time and how you use your phone, share it with someone whose life might be slipping away six seconds at a time. Sometimes understanding the why is the first step toward changing the what.